In ancient Egypt, Maat was the goddess of truth, justice, harmony, and balance. She was one of the pharaohs looked upon when they enforced the rules, and the one who presided over the wane of the heart of the soul ceremony, where the deceased person's heart was weighed against one of her feathers. If the scales balanced out, that person would live on in glorious bliss in the afterlife. But there were plenty of ways people living in Egypt could be doomed. Here are some of the rules and laws set up to make sure that didn't happen. Bad ways to go. So being burned alive was a possibility in Egypt if you mess with Ra. Being burned alive meant that that person had no chance of getting into the afterlife, the ultimate burn. But what other horrible ways to go were there if you broke the rules? First, let's talk about who doled out the punishments. There were three main courts of law in ancient Egypt. There was the Sheru, which was a group of elders in rural communities. Then there was the Kenbet, which was the regional court. And finally, the Jajat, or the High Imperial Court. Which court dealt with which criminal depended on where the crime took place, its severity, and who was involved? Serious crimes were punished quite severely. If someone took the life of another on purpose, and yes, there was a distinction between involuntary manslaughter and stealing someone's life, then they were often beaten and then fed to the crocodiles on the banks of the Nile. If a man took advantage of a woman, his, um, you know, would be amputated. And if you stole something really valuable, you risked having your hands or legs amputated. Now be advised, this next creepy example of scary historical moments involves the punishment between family members committing crimes against one another. If younglings lost their temper with their parents and stole their lives, the adolescent would have their flesh exposed with reeds, then they were placed on a bed of thorns and set ablaze. But if parents took the lives of their kin, they were not sentenced to death. Instead, they were forced to hold the body of their kin for three days until it began to decompose. Birth Control and Gender The ancient Egyptians had plenty of rules surrounding contraception, marriage, and gender. In a way, they were having gender reveal parties all the way into the afterlife, humans and gods alike. First, let's talk about birth control. The Egyptians used it for sure, but there were some pretty wild versions of it. Acacia gum and honey was a popular one. Women would combine the mixture with a piece of cloth and insert it into their, you know, the acacia gum would ferment and then create lactic acid, which is a natural spermicide. Another less sanitary option was crocodile dung. Yeah, that stopped me. Aside from the horrible smell, the effectiveness of using crocodile feces as birth control is highly questionable. They were sacred animals for the Egyptians, though. Still, bad idea, Egypt. There was also a lot of gender fluidity in Egyptian culture. Gods often had sex changes as they cycle through their births and rebirths and it was even thought that a person could change sexes after death in order to have a successful transition into the afterlife. These beliefs were reflected in society. Egypt was pretty gender neutral. Women and men did a lot of the same work, and there were many powerful female leaders, including the one and only Cleopatra. But it wasn't all free love and music festivals, though. Marriage was definitely still a thing, and in certain eras, adultery was even punishable by death. However, there were no ceremonies or any pomp attached to marriage. It was just something people did when they wanted to have kids. Don't turn your back on cats. You know, in my opinion, if our cute little house cats suddenly became the size of tigers, they would probably eat us. But just like the home of some crazy cat lady, cats were basically considered royalty in ancient Egypt. The Egyptians worshipped and venerated lots of animals. Crocodiles and hippopotami were feared but still worshipped to avoid their wrath. Bulls and dogs were sacred. So were cobras and baboons. But the cat held a special place in society. We can see statues of them everywhere. And they were even mummified, just like people. Egyptians thought cats were magical and brought good luck. Cat owners who lost one of their beloved felines would mourn by shaving their eyebrows, only ending their period of mourning once they grew back, which usually takes about four months. Cats were so revered in Egypt that if someone killed one, even if it was by accident, then they would be sentenced to death. Sorry, son, your furry feline brother is getting the inheritance. Tomb Raiders When we think of Tomb Raider, most of us probably conjure up images of Lara Croft or people in funny archaeology hats 
breaking through stone and unearthing all kinds of treasure and curses. But tomb raiding was a big problem during the time of the pharaohs, too. Egyptian tombs could hold lots and lots of valuable stuff. Solid gold sarcophagi, piles of jewels, artwork, all of it stuffed within the final resting places of some of Egypt's most revered rulers. When King Tut's tomb was famously unearthed, there was an estimated three quarters of a billion dollars worth of loot packed in there with the young pharaoh. So there was a lot of incentive to break in and make some money. But if you were caught, instead of buying a gold chain and icing out your current jewelry accessories, you'd either be tortured into a confession or sentenced to death, or both. By the time of the New Kingdom around 1500 BC, grave robbing had become such a problem that Amenhotep I decided to build a special site near Thebes. It's known as the Valley of the Kings, and all the Egyptian royalty could be buried with their earthly riches and the whole thing would be more closely guarded from raiders. Various papyrus texts have been found documenting different cases of grave robbery and how they were dealt with. One of them, called the Ramesai Tomb Robbery Papyri, describes a grave robbing operation that involved a complex network of communication and coordination between thieves and government officials. It details the trial of five men accused of the robberies, but in the end, they were found innocent. It seems corruption and scandal was very much a thing even thousands of years ago. Party Tombs Tombs of the dead were often not somber, dreary places in Egypt. They were colorful and actually full of life. According to the instruction of Hardif, a text written by a 5th dynasty sage, each Egyptian household should prepare their home for their inevitable death. The tomb was their eternal home, and they furnished it in much the same way. Over the course of their lives, nobles would add to their tombs. Many of them have been found with fertility statues and phallic objects, which reflected the belief that they'd still be performing intercourse in the afterlife. Of course, a big part of the Egyptian economy was catering to wealthy people who wanted nice tombs, just like funeral homes today offer that $10,000 coffin. However, the death industry in ancient Egypt was even busier, as people were constantly picking out things they wanted for their tombs over the entire course of their lives. The tombs were not simply sealed and forgotten once the person had died, either. There's a lot of evidence that family members would often visit the tombs and discuss everyday matters with their dead relatives. Wrath of the Sun God Just like a pale-skinned person who sits on the beach for too long without sunscreen, ancient Egyptians could feel the wrath of the sun. In ancient Egypt, the sun was the giver of life. It was embodied in the deity Ra, who traveled across the sky during the day and then at night descended into the Duat, or the underworld, to merge with Osiris, the god of the dead. In the morning, Ra was reborn and the cycle continued. But if you disrespected Ra in any way, you were pretty much screwed. Egyptians love Ra so much that if someone spoke ill of him, vandalized a temple dedicated to him, or did anything else that leaders thought could be deemed offensive to the sun god, that person would be burned alive. The brutal judgment was carried out as a ritual to appease Ra and ask him for forgiveness. While the extent of how often this happened is uncertain, it probably didn't descend into a Spanish Inquisition-style witch hunt. Still though, it's pretty much the worst sunburn you could ever get. Have any other weird ancient Egyptian rules? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Nutty History.